All right, and welcome. So we are back with uh, another offensive pen testing here, and we'll uh, hit up these boxes. So right now I'm on Alfred, one of Marceline's when she was hiding. That's Marceline. I can't be bouncing around, shaking stuff. It uh, it wakes you up too much. So that's only on school nights. <laughs> no, what's that? All of your trash, all of your peanut butter, evidence. No, I just didn't see it. No, I didn't. So I started looking around. No. All right, so we got Alfred here. So let's go ahead and uh, copy down his IP address, and we'll go ahead and start up an map scan. So we got port 80 and port 8080. Let's go ahead and uh. So listen to not that one. There we go. Alfred. Okay, I'm at. We know what we're using Jenkins on this one. Jenkins web app. Then we know there's going to be some type of privilege escalation, obviously. So, uh, looks like we also have. So this is a Windows box, obviously, because it's looking like, you know. 3389 is open. I kind of forgot about that on this one. That's going to be Windows. I don't remember much else except for they were using uh, Jenkins. It says like right there, exploit Jenkins, gain initial cell. This wants to use the Nishing script, so we're going to go ahead and Nishing. I don't really want to say that, but we can go ahead and look those up. Which very famous tool here. Um, yeah, I mean, we have different shells. We can create that shell, PowerShell TCP. Um, but he's looking for. A reverse TCP, partial TCP tack reverse tack IP. Okay, cool. So yeah, we could probably we could grab that. <coughs> oh, man, big sneak. All right. Oh, yeah, we have that like right there also. So that's like where those tools are at. You just locate it. We actually have home desktop try hack me Alfred nashing shells. So we actually have like the shells like right in there. Home Kelly desktop Alfred. Which I think is pretty funny. I put them all in there and then just put them into a regular spot. Yeah, that's kind of funny. But yeah, you can download all those tools if you click on here. You can download all those tools. So I'm probably just going to download them and put them in the correct spot, actually. Do that like right now. And we'll go ahead and we'll put those guys into a. Uh, get clone. Get clone. There we go. So now he's not just always sitting in Alfred. So we should be able to do a locate. Nice shame. Like I said, very uh, famous. I like right there. And we should have them in more spots than just Alfred. Don't know why. I mean, I do. CD into. I probably got to do an update, huh? So sudo apt update. Some of that. But we'll, we'll wait on that. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and we can start off with everything that we want to do here. So we start off our map scan. We got port 80, 80, 80, and 3389. Let's go ahead and check out those different ports there. Port 80, 80, 80, and 3389, which we're not really able to check that one out. Let's go ahead and 80, 80. There we go. Rest in peace, Bruce Wayne. Donation to Alfred at WayneEnterprise.com. Greatly appreciated. And then sign in to Jenkins. Go ahead and try admin to admin for a sign in. Maybe. Hopefully. Or if it's like Alfred or something like that. Try to do uh, maybe. Um... Oh, no, we're in. Okay, cool. So admin to admin was our credentials there. Um, so there's actually a couple ways to get a reverse shell on Jenkins. You good? You need help? So there's actually a couple ways to get a reverse shell on Jenkins though. We can actually go into uh, Jenkins command line interface and actually do it and we can also do it through script console. So this guy, he wants us to do it through script console I believe it is. So find a feature for a tool that underlies system. We find a feature. Okay, first you download that, get that. Okay. Let's go ahead and look up uh, Hacking Jenkins, or we got to look up 
a certain type of uh, code that Jenkins utilizes. There we go. Available commands. Jenkins CLI. So, oh, this guy has certain commands that we can do, though. I see. Okay. So, Groovy SH runs an interactive Groovy shell. I kind of want to see uh, if we can do this through Groovy. I've already done it the other way. Yeah, let's do it. Manage Jenkins, command, player manager, open up automatically. Should be able to just click on that guy and do it. I don't know why I'm not seeing anything in there. Um, script console. Type in arbitrary groovy script. There we go. Let's go ahead and open make a new tab. We can actually look up like a um, reverse shell Windows groovy script. All right, pure groovy Java reverse shells. So we can actually look these up. We can find them for both Windows and Linux in here. Um, this link right here. Trying to see if it's like bin bash or command prompt string command.exe. So that's this one, like right here, is most likely actually going to be a reverse shell. So there's a string port string host equals local host. I'm wondering if that's like by attacking machine or not. Might be. I'm not seeing anywhere else to put in my attacker machine, so that one might be it. Let's go ahead and grab him. Let's go ahead and actually go to Raleigh real quick. We'll grab him from here. And I just want to try this a different way, just because I have done it before the other way. That's on stream. So I want to actually try this a different way, see if we can actually hop into it. Um, full B. And for string host, I think I want to put in my um, IP address, I think. And then for port, we can say 8044, then we can just listen on that, I guess. Yeah, this should be a reverse shell for command.exe, should. Um, we'll try it. We'll see what happens. Go ahead and run it, and we do get it back over here. So that's another way to do it with a Groovy script. Uh, we can do DIR. Cool. Uh, let's go ahead and actually exit out of here, and we'll um, we'll see another way also. Let's go ahead and use exploit or MSF console. Rest in peace, headphone wearers. Yeah, we'll do MSF console, and then we'll do a. So if you follow along with this you'll get it in a different way. Or if you follow my old stream, you'll get it a different way, okay? He actually has us doing all that stuff, using MSF Venom, um, using PowerShell afterwards to download the file and everything like that. Let's go ahead and use exploit multi -header. So if you follow along with his way, that's one way to do it. This is going to be another way to do it. So both the same thing, just different ways to do it. Let's go ahead and do a use or uh, set payload to Windows reverse uh, Windows actually it should be a generic shell huh it's probably should be a generic shell reverse TCP set our L host to ton zero set our L4 to 8044 I want to run that and we should hopefully once we get this up and running be able to move it into a interpreter shell maybe so he is getting that call back. There's that. Control Z to background it. Yes. Let's go ahead and uh, search for uh, shell 2. No, it's that underscore 2. Let's go bring up shell to interpreter. Let's go ahead and use 0. Show options. Should have to put in session 1. Session 1. Set session, excuse me. Set session to 1. And we go ahead and run that. Now, if you already have quite a few of these ran, you might have to change the all ports so you know. So it'll actually tell us like if this can be upgraded, if it's going to succeed, things like that. It's usually pretty good at it. The shell to interpreter, I like it a lot.
works great for uh, CPT. CPPT, whatever it's called. Hopefully we get it. Interpreter session, we're trying. If not, we could always uh, we could always use PowerShell in here. We could always upload something through command prompt. I believe. Uh, I believe we could actually look at it and do a uh, download file through command prompt and download file from the command line in Windows. We could do it like that too. So, oh, you can use wget in there. No. Um, so shell the target platform base cannot be upgraded with interpreter at this time. Ooh, session one. Okay. So who am I? Let's start off with that. Or I actually, okay, so I'm Alfred Bruce. We can check out our priv. So who am I? Slash priv. Okay. Um, this box did come out a little bit ago too. So I'm not going to do if it's like impersonate or anything like that. Uh, we don't want to try to do anything like that. This is all disabled. What we have here, we got debug programs enabled. We have notify privilege bypass transverse checkings enabled. The person a privilege, yeah, that one like right there. I don't think that's the intended path. Let's go and check out Alpha Lake real quick just to make sure. He's downloaded the file to PowerShell. Boom, boom, privilege escalation. Okay, so it is the intended path. Well, he has loaded the kind of veto. You can see that there's two privilege. I see. Debug privilege. Okay, so it is impersonate privilege. I thought that this one was a little bit older than that. Um, I didn't know that that was the intended path. Can we do W again here also? W is not recognized. I didn't think so. Okay, so you're lying to me. There are windows and vote. Okay, it's not. I confess this is not a curl tool. So yeah, yeah. I wonder if we can get PowerShell working from this this uh, command prompt that we have over here. Can we do a PowerShell? We do that. Sometimes all of a sudden will bring up PS. Or sometimes it'll just you just have to type in PS. Oh, oh, oh what do we got here? Looks like he's trying to. Windows PowerShell. Copyright. Boom boom. He's trying to do it. Uh, let's go ahead and see if we can show you all the how to download files from command line and Windows. Those binary boom from SourceForge. Okay, let's see what that's all about. This guy, he's still not getting anything, so it's looking like maybe we should have followed exactly what they had on there, but we're going to work around that. We're going to keep going. It's always good to learn other ways. Using PowerShell. Windows 10 includes curl.exe. PowerShell. It's possible to download a file. Cert Util, really? So you have Cert Util. Uh, let's go ahead and run this again. Um, use exploit multi handler. Uh, set payload. Let's try to set something at Windows. Windows slash shell reverse TCP. Please do that. And then we might be able to upgrade that to an interpreter shell more easily. Let's go ahead and run that now. 8044. So that's why I'm doing that. So I'm saying it's Windows something because I want to see if maybe we can run that. Okay, so we're still getting it back and everything. That's good. Control Z, yes. Um, let's go ahead and do a um, search for shell 2. Shell 2 again, U0. Um, we should be able to do session stack I. See how many sessions we have. We have so we're on ID number 2 now. So let's do a set session 2. Let's go ahead and run that. This one looks like we're getting it now. So wasn't able to do that generic one. Looks like as of right now we're able to do shell interpreter. It may still fail. Um, it's looking like that's going to work. And we just got interpreter session open. So session three, and we have this get UID. See if it's actually working. Okay. Yep. Alfred Bruce get UID one more time. Did I get kicked out of it? No. It looks like we're good. We're good. All right, cool. Um, control Z, yes. Session tag I. I should still have both sessions open. I do. All right, awesome. So let's go ahead and get a more stable shell is what they want you doing um, the uh, actual file there. But we should be pretty good, actually, in the actual box there. Let's go ahead. I mean, we can make another shell, though. We can always do it. Oh, I didn't 
put any of that in my notes too. So let's go ahead and close this print screen. Boom, boom. And I'll just write down that admin admin was our username and password. Username and password, admin, admin. Boom, we got that. Let's go ahead and actually throw that into here. One, two, three, control C, boom, boom. Control V, reverse shell. The above is a reverse shell written in Groovy script. All right, uh, from there we have. We were able to do this guy over here, right? So we should probably just show that, hey, we start up a exploit multi handler, bam. Uh, do I actually have set payload right here? I do. Okay, cool. We'll do this like right here. Bam. Just so I can see that I did do a Windows Shell Reverse TCP payload. Boom. Okay. And we'll go into Privest now. And. We can now do, um, uh, we probably just type a get system. I might actually just be able to type that in, I'll ask you. We might be able to get it. If we can. <laughs> get UID. So in real life, that's what I'll do. I mean, that's what I'll do in real life. I wouldn't be doing all the print spoofer stuff and everything like that. If I could just do a quick get system. Um, now, is that fair? No. So let's go ahead and exit out of here. And let's go ahead and do another search or session set session to two we'll run that and we'll do another one with with an interpreter we'll do another one for uh what is it um the prince woofer we'll do that we'll do se impersonate privilege okay I thought what he did. He used a list tokens. He used a personate token. All right, that's what he did, but we should be able to actually do something else with it. That's the impersonate privilege. Uh, let's go ahead and look up. Let's see impersonate privilege. Anyways, impersonate privilege with juicy potato. Is that what it is? Bounty G is sealed. That's the way my privilege is. That's the impersonate privilege. Says, or that if enable a machine to elevate local privileges system, normally these privileges are assigned to a service user having local system high integrity. The machine is running on IS or SQL service, these privileges will be enabled by default. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Alright, uh, let's go ahead and keep looking. Affected Windows versions. Okay. Two speed does not work for Windows Server 2019, Windows 10 version 1809 and higher. All right, and this is Prince Proofer. However, there's another technique called Prince Proofer for abusing versions introduced by IT4. I mean, this is the one that I'm more used to. Go ahead and go over here and rum potato, more juice be potato, person and privileges. All right, um, first two. I just want to actually look up Prince Proofer. Prince Proofer on GitHub. We should actually just be able to do it quick. As you can see, I've obviously looked at this before using privileges. This one I just looked at? No. Okay, so there's, you're going to find a few of them in here. There's one that I found works better than the other one. Um, at least how I use it for my needs or whatever else. Uh, maybe it's this one. Principalfer.exe. Yeah, I believe it's this one like right here. So let's go ahead and download that. We'll move it over to the box and we'll go from there. Let's actually see if I already have it. Let's go ahead and locate. Oh, okay. What do we got here? Windows script print spoofer. Why are so many all relevant? Okay, so I already have print spoofer. Is that print spoofer.exe? EWPT. Have it in there. Boom, boom, boom. Print spoofer.exe. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and grab that. Um, just so you know, it does not work. So you can try the EWPT, it doesn't work. Go and copy PrinceProof.exe to right here. Alright. And let's go ahead and upload that. So we'll do a. Um,
Let's put the L4 or something else. 4-4-4-4 four, 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 maybe. We're running. Maybe it didn't fully kill the other job and we're having problems with that like right now. He's just all kind of hoping that's going on. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's what it's looking like. So we got our Prince Booper.exe over to here. So let's go ahead and let's try to throw it into we'll do sessions uh, four. Uh, PWD. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to do anything there. Let's go ahead and CD into C users. Whoops. Okay, that worked. No, it didn't. users dir uh cd and a bruce i guess can i do that can we put something in here like cd in like his desktop we're gonna be able to put a file in here can we like there's our user text uh can we upload print spoof right here Yes, we can. All right, cool. So now we can, should be able to run print spoofer, actually. We should be able to do a shell. We're in um, Bruce's desktop there. And we should be able to run print spoofer.exe with tag i, tag c command. And let's go ahead and do a quick get UID or who am I? Yeah, who am I? That's not going to work. Who am I? There we go. And we'll go ahead and throw that in there. I think that should work. Oh, that's how we did it, and that was it. Form privilege to grant system user shell access. Huh, we did not get anything, did we? Oh, tech I, tech C. Yeah, I think that's it, like right there. Maybe this was the one that always confused me, and there's another one. No, that's definitely it, like right there. Huh. So that one's not working for us, like right there now, is it? That tech I tech seed command. We do have this guy over here. That potato.exe, who am I? And he was able to do that. I wonder if the command is actually something like written back to us. I don't think it is, though. Not that I remember. Tech C, uh, who am I? Yeah, okay, that's not it. Um. So we already figured out one way to be able to get to, we already did a, you know, get system that worked. That's Windows 8 through 10. Um, Prince proof of Windows Privilege Escalation Tool. Yeah, PrinceSpoofer.exe, tech I, tech C command, yeah. So that should go through and do all that stuff like right there. It's not though. Let's go ahead and, um, I wonder if print spoofer is acting weird because, is it executable in here? Um, I like delete. Print spoofer. Uh, can I do that? Is that a thing? DL? Alright, it is a thing. Okay, cool. Can we move print spoofer to print spoofer? Uh, exe, I wonder if it, internally if it's looking for something. Change mode 777 to print spoofer. Uh, exe, and then can we go ahead and upload? Try to upload uh, print spoofer. Uh, exe, and I think we can also run from out here too. I think we just type in run print spoofer. Uh, exe. Tag guy, tag C command. Can we do that out here? I feel like we can't. No, we can't. Okay. So, we probably can, just I don't know how to. Um, so, if you want to do uh, DIR, see if print spoofer is in here again, it is print spoofer.exe, tag i, tag c, command. It may not be able to, it may actually be too old. <laughs> like, no joke. Because it is Windows 7. I see a person privilege, and he is enabled. So, Oh, that's a that's a weird one that it says no, cause it says straight up that hey, this is on there, huh? Choose incognito module that allows to exploit this vulnerability. Enter load incognito to load incognito module exploit. Please note you may need to use incognito command. The previous command does not work. Also, sure the best place to update. I don't know why we're not able to do it that way. Let's go ahead and exit. 
we'll load incognito. Okay. And from there, we can go ahead and do the uh, yeah, list token stack G. Okay, we can see that built-in administrator's token is available. And we can impersonate that token. So we'll go ahead and, oh, those tokens. All right. So built-in administrator. Yep, that is definitely available. We'll go ahead and uh, go to here and then do another privilege escalation. Okay. There is one way. Another way is below. Send person a privilege is on. Which for some reason, one of them are, this one's going to work, the other one's not. I don't know why. Maybe uh, someone can explain to me why that is. That would be sweet. Uh, so let's go ahead and go down here. We'll see that both city administrators are 100% available. Oh, whoops. There we go. Built in slash administrators. Okay, cool. And then from here we have there's our list tokens, built in administrators, tokens available. Use a personate token, built in administrators command to personate the administrators token. Okay, so we can do impersonate token built in uh, slash administrators. ST administrators command. Not currently running the system, so definitely a person and user. ST authority system, get UID, and we should now be ST authority system. So, cool. Alright. So, that looks like another way that we can do it. So, we did get system, then we did that one. For some reason, Prince Spoofer doesn't work on this box. Alright. Awesome. I think Prince Pooper is newer. I think Prince Pooper might be too new for this guy. So let's go ahead and terminate him. We're done with this one right here. Exit, 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 tack Y. Exit, exit, exit. Uh, CD, boom. Clear. Alright, cool. And let's go ahead and back out of here. And I guess we'll do the next one. Um, I think we'll come back to that one because I've never, you know what, we're going to try him. We're going to go ahead and try him. Okay. No point not trying him. Star Machine. What's the name of the clown display on the homepage? I'm going to go with it. Or what's his name? Uh, Pennywise. I'm going to go with Pennywise. Let's go with that. Pennywise. We crushed it. We don't even need to start these boxes nowadays, you know? What type of request is Windows Web and Login for using? Post. Post or get? See? Guess a username, choose a password, word list, and gain credentials to the user account. Damn. I don't know. Guess a username. What? How to take all username? It wants us to also guess a username? Oh, God. Like admin, hopefully. Hint. Username is admin. Okay, cool. Yeah, username is admin. See? I got this down. Alright, we got quite a few seconds left. Um, I believe this is a Windows machine. It's got a little Windows thing like right there. So we'll give it a minute, but let's go ahead while that's waiting. We forget. We keep forgetting to get the app scan for whatever. Um, let's go ahead and throw in a. Uh, it's called Hack Pack, right? I believe. Hack pack? Hack park. Whoopsie daisy. Hack park. Uh, change old properties. So hack P A R K. Hack park. Alright, cool. Say enter on that guy and we'll do nmap supposedly. nmap um, initial access. I and I. Initial access, I guess. And then progress. Do something just like easy like that. And then if there's anything else in there, then we'll. Switch it off from there. So it did start up. We should have something. Let's see. Let's go ahead and do a, a map. Boom. See if this guy's actually uh, up or not. 
And he is. So we got 480 and port 338 now so far. So he most likely is Windows. All right, let's go ahead and do a um, Go Buster. Dirt Attack U, State Attack X Red uh, 100. And we'll do this for the IP address. Uh, let's also, since we do have a port 8, let's also do a Nikto. Attack, attack URL. All right, cool. Um, and let's go ahead and look at that. 10104190, like right there. I don't know how well it's going to work right here. That guy did not do anything. Okay. 10104190. Yeah, you didn't do anything at all. Okay, oops, I don't expect errors to occur. There's one. There's one down to me. Please accept my apologies for this. I'll see that fell for fixing the 20 last year. Okay, whatever. All right, let's see here. Star header, blah, blah, blah. All right, context. URL. Just scrap right there. Okay, search action, target. Search question mark Q equals search string. All right. Yeah, that like right there. That's something to look into like right there. Um, so when home. Okay. Old school one. Administrator is a user. Okay. Read more. They post comment by visitor. It's going to reply. Never know. You never know. We'll try it. See if we get anything. Something super easy. Not going to be too easy though. Because it won't actually load. Or maybe it actually just doesn't state the comments. I don't know. Archive. Total post. One comment. Contact. I saw a sign. A login from a minute ago. Contact test 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 dot com test do something like that, send that off. I don't know if it's actually going anywhere. It's all logging literally freaking Yeah, okay, so if you go to home they got logging, go to the other one's login's gone. So we do have login. Let's try admin admin. Oopsie daisy. Admin admin or admin password we'll try those two. Tracing we gave login failed, okay, so it's not telling me if the username is incorrect or password is incorrect. Throw on Burp Suite. I have to get Burp Suite up and running first. And from here, we'll uh, intercept that request and then start to look at it from like right there. That's what I'm thinking. Proxy view state. That would be everything we need, like right there, actually. That would be everything that we need. Let's go ahead and copy that. Yeah, that's everything that we need for this guy, like right here. Um, I mean, <laughs> it's going to be ugly, but I think that we could actually use that guy, like right there. Um, so let's go ahead and start up our payload here. We'll do how's your tech out? Okay, word list. Um, I don't think we do. We need the IP address just yet. We're gonna need the IP address, HTTP form post or post form. Might be uh, it's probably they said post form, right? HTTP post form. Okay, boom. And then we're gonna put in the beginning of this guy. Post to account login ASPX. I think question mark. Did we show that question mark? I think. If that doesn't work, then we'll know that that is wrong. That's all, but it should be something like that, right? Um, 
how long it is for no that should be like that then view state then all this crap is right here and we are going to have to change something up in there I believe I believe we are going to change up stuff in there um, because we're going to tell like, like the username and password actually goes right that's all I think I would think that that's what we would do um, I think it would be like be right around here. We got username equals admin blah 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 main content login user. But I think it should be username equals uh, carrot user. That's what I think it should be. So it should be carrot username equals carrot user, right? Because that's what we want to use for this guy. If you scroll up, I know we need user and password in there. So if we scroll up, we can actually see we have to actually use wherever instead of somewhere. Oh, there it is. We gotta use user and pass like that. So we have user and that password would equal password. Now the username that we get for this carrot, that user is this guy right here. Attack out password is attack P. So we'll say I'll use this pass like that. And that might be it. Enter. Nope. Okay, I'll see here. Cross detect for us three arguments separated by colon, which may not be null. Huh? Okay. So we're getting there, I feel like. We're getting farther. How about that? Um, requires three arguments separated by colon, which may not be null. What in the hell does that mean? I need login failed in here still. Maybe that's what it's asked for. Maybe because I don't have login failed. Like another colon and then login failed. So log post in colon. Um, I think it's going to be login failed. And then what does login failed equal, right? Because it needs to know if it failed, right? Yeah, okay, cool. We did it. I think. So let's go ahead and show this on Burp Suite here, or show what we just did. There, boom, boom. Okay, then we'll say um, brute force, brute force with Hydra. Okay, and we'll go ahead and we'll throw this whole thing in there. Oh, oh. Okay. And we'll go ahead and throw all the syntax we use right here and there. Bam. Let's say post above the username equals user and password equals pass and at the end another colon Another colon login failed. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and scroll down. Uh, it hasn't got anywhere yet. Did try 448 tries though. It has a lot of tries to do. I, I also have no idea what the other password is. So. I know that's super helpful to everybody, but I don't know what the password is. It's uh, more of a black box like right now. But we're going to try them out. I mean, why not, right? Go ahead and stop this, actually. Turn that off. First seat there. Come on, big guy. I also have no idea if this is even right. <laughs> I'm hoping that this is right. Well, that admin's a user also. <laughs> so, hey, just guess the username and go for it. Oh, okay. It did say admin was a user, but it's like, come on now. If we look at the hint, we do get a hint that admin is the user. But, uh, hopefully. Hopefully we get something here in a little bit. Alright, that still works, so... Our Peter hasn't been blocked or anything like that yet. He's taking his time doing this. 
Next is compromised the machine. Oh crap. Alright. So fifteen minutes so far, we haven't gotten in yet. Still waiting on uh on this. As if it's even working, I have no idea. Or if it's still working, I have no clue. Uh oh. I've said before, and I'll say it again, if you build a box in Try Hack Me or Proving Grounds or Vault Hub or Hack the Box, just make it one like the first like 10 passwords, dude. One down, two down. Stop making people wait forever for something that they already know what they did right. All right, cool. Thank you very much. Bam. So that did actually work like right there, and we do get a password back. Let me go and print screen that. Boom, boom. Okay, real life, I understand it. And test that, you know, you have seven days for I understand it. And like, these guys, I do not. Alright, so let's go ahead and hop into there. Admin, one down, two down. Don't save. Let's see if we get that right. Game access. Alright, and we did get into it. How are we looking at here? What are we looking at here? We have, I don't know. What are you? Don't see anything about you. Content, you can log off, change the password, profile, and view my blog. Content, welcome to Hack Park. Date 2018 published authors admin comments one probably comment on his own page didn't he? What in the hell? Content custom settings. Two other settings it about. Let's see what the heck this thing is first. About what are you? You are blog engine net 3.3.6.0. Okay. Uh, so we got that like right there. Bam. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and check out this guy right here. Blog Engine Net. I'm going to do a search for it for Blog Engine. Blog Engine Net 3.3.6. Bam. Alright, cool. So, print screen head. Boom, boom. So, I believe that that was actually some of the questions too. 3.3.6.0. What is the CVE? Use the exploit database archive to find the exploit to gain a reverse shell on the system. Alright, we have theme cookie, directory transversal, directory transversal, directory transversal, remote code execution. That seems like fun. And XML external entity injection. Um, I'm going to go with that. Oh, there's two of them that are remote code execution. Python, Python. Do the same thing. British disclosure. Let's go ahead and cap this guy out then. Now let's go ahead and do a search for it. Uh, attack M. And let's go ahead and cap 47010. Hi. And let's go ahead and see what the CVE is first off. CVE 2019-01719. Is this what it's looking for, Graham? Let's look for that. Let's look at the hints. Look at the answers for a CVE year number. Okay, so it is not that one like right there. I mean, there's quite a few of them on there, so I mean, it helped me out very much. Alright, um, I guess this wants to look at all these TVs right here. Upload and trigger reverse shell. Maybe it's one of the other ones. So, we just did that one like right there, right? Maybe it's the path or this guy right here. That's not gonna work. Four seven zero one one. 
dot pi. Okay. Are you a different CVE number? I feel like you are the same one. You are the same one. Is there something I'm not realizing here? <laughs> Is there a state afterwards? Okay. Um, a little bit confused. Let's go ahead and test it out like, real quick to see. That's just the same thing I just read. Let's go ahead and test this guy out like, real quick. See what we got to do with this guy also. So, or else login, account login, transversal. Okay. I feel like we need to get rid of both of those. I feel like those need to change like right there. We may not even need a proxy, I don't know. Um, just so they run the reverse shell on the system. I actually don't know how to use Python exploit.py to target and then the local listening host. Okay, cool. So we'll do a Python. 4711.py the target which is going to be him bam and then we'll do myself as the local listening host tech out and we'll create a little nc tech lvmp 4444 I have config down here 4444 and line 85 doesn't like those equal signs. Python 3? Maybe Python 3 likes equal signs. No, none of them like those little equal signs because they're about 4, 7, 1, 0. What about you? Okay, maybe your Python 3 or just regular Python. Okay, failed to establish a new connection. Error connection refused. Well, no, why was it, why was it re 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 refused? I need a lot more information here. If you need that much information, you gotta get like a little, like, nice little. Like, this is how you use it. Let's go ahead and cat that one. Arguments targets, arguments user, arguments password, arguments directory, arguments listener. What? Okay, so let's go ahead and see how I use this guy. Same exact way. Upload and trigger reverse shell. Open a listener, cat reverse shell, mess plate, or net cat. I did. Okay. So we will try that one more time. 10, 10, 41, 190, right? 10, 10, 41, 190. Boom, boom. Does not seem like that very much. Error. Failed to establish a new connection. Okay. That's all right. Let's go ahead and do a search for For that blog engine again. Uh, maybe it's this CS1. Maybe it's theme cookie. Maybe it's a lot of them. Who knows? Let's go ahead and check out this guy right here. Thank uh first boy. That guy. Boom. Go ahead and cat that 463. What do you do? What is your CVE? Yours is a different number. Maybe it's you. Hey, that's correct. Okay. Always pick the odd one out. Patches versus ball related remote code execution is ball related fresh blog engine dot net. This is caused by an unchecked theme parameter. Okay. Attack. First we set the TCP and sign involved with this trigger by accessing the base URL. Alright, well how do I use you though? Use this exploit gain is access to the website. I wish I could gain initial access. Trust me. I think that's what I, I want to change that right there. I think it. Then it's going to run command.exe. Well, it is Windows. We saw 3389 over here, so that's good. We love Windows. So we don't have to change it to like a bit bash or anything like that. Um, the admin page that allows uploads is that. If 
probably involved that it's triggered by accessing the base URL, for example. If it allows uploads, can I say upload like a reverse PHP? I'm wondering. You know? It would be pretty funny if I could just go like a reverse PHP shell. Just do it like that. Right there. I did it. Okay, I see her. Um, can I do this? So this is what allows uploads. Oh no, we are never going to. Okay, so how do I upload something into here? File manager? Oh yeah, okay, you can upload something. Can we upload this like a reverse PHP shell? I'm just gonna try to upload one like real quick, see if it allows it, and then just run it. I wonder if it'll do that. Um, let's go in desktop. Oh, we had try hack me right, and I did. This is called the uh, what is this called? Um, learning pass, offensive pen testing. I just want to try to do, do shell.phtml. Completed. Okay. Just like click on him and just publish. Shell. Publish. Can I do that? Post daddy, go to post. If I click on him now, is it gonna like run? That was a lizard by the way, in case you guys heard that. There's literally a lizard over here. Just so you guys know. I was like click on him? Does he run? No. I was just seeing like if that would work, that's all. So how do you guys get him to run now is my question. Finally, the vulnerability is triggered by accessing the base URL for the blog with a theme override app data. Okay, peer peer slash peer slash app data files. And that's in theme question mark theme equals. So it's going to be blah blah, blah question mark theme equals. Is that like a thing? I do that. Plus that terminating. What about app data? App data files shell dot phtml. What about that? No. Okay. Well, app data shell.phtml No, okay, I'll see if I can just kind of do this by hand. Alright, um, we probably could figure out if we really, really try. Let's go ahead and look up this exploit and see if there's any other, like, you know, hey, this is how you run it. Exploit DB, showing it. Same exact thing. Let's try to run this. How do we even run a CS script? How the hell do we even run this thing? I'm trying to figure out how the hell to run this guy now, you know? And this is like, from like the hardest part, like right here. Um, but we will figure it out. Oh, we will.
And I thought he was going to pop up. We did just put in like shell PHTML lost. There's him. Can I just like upload that CS file? I'm wondering now. Is that what I have to do? Do I have to upload the CS file like right here? So do I have to go to here and upload? Okay. Is that what I have to do like right now? What is that one called again? So let's call you A.CS. How about that? How's that sound there, big guy? Okay, so we're here, right? Let's go ahead and delete that. So now we want to upload the file, right? I'm thinking, I think we need to upload it. Um, I'm wondering if. Publish post. Welcome to have fun. This. This is what I'm thinking we can mess with, like right here. We edit the image. Image options. Sources that. Can we, like, make it so we. That guy has some type of. Ooh. We still need to freaking um, change out our IP address too. Um, we upload a file. Okay, we can we can upload a file in here. There's my shell that PHTML. Uh, let's go and delete him, and let's go ahead and. Nano a.cs, I guess. And we will go ahead and do a. I think we just want to put our IP address into here. Not theirs. Wherever the heck we want. It's right here. So let's go ahead and put in 10.452.203. And I guess we'll be listing out port 4445. We can actually just change that. So there we have 4444 up and running. Okay, there we go. Let's go ahead and uh, upload a.cs, I guess. Okay. Um, is that like save now? And this is in app data files. Okay, so that is app data files. Okay. Right. That's that one. That's this one. A.cs. Exit up here. Save it. Alright, cool. So we did that so far. Right. Now we are we are staged and everything. We have our so now we should be able to technically go to theme equals at that file, right? So do our question mark theme equals to your slash to your slash at that files. And we don't even have that CS1 even in here, we still have that guy in there. That's not helpful at all now, is it? Save fucker. Okay. Refresh him. We're still getting that shell one in there. But we should have that a.cs in there. Or is a.cs not an actual thing? Like, are we not able to go to post? Can we edit it in, in here? Edit. Alright, that's not helping out at all. Same exact spot I just was. File manager. We have a.cs here. We literally have nothing else we could possibly do. Um, exit out of here. Save that. Save it again. A million times. Save it. Save, 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 save. Okay, now I want to go to theme. Question mark. Themes. Theme. Equals. Period slash, 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 files. Okay, so that's too many period, period slashes. So it actually can't take three. 
and it keeps going right back to this fucker, like right here. That is a real fucking thing. Sweet. Maybe I need to. Um, let's see here. Yeah, I need to edit it again. And this time we will. When. Uh, what do we edit this guy? Oh, yeah, here we go. File manager. Maybe we can't do the CS. Maybe we can do like. Damn you. Oh, there he is, like right there. Maybe we can do it now. He's actually showing up though now, is he? Okay. Let's go ahead and you didn't do shit. Um need to change this guy maybe? Change the file name? No, I don't want to do that. Cancel that. Edit. Delete him. Uh, let's go ahead and move this. Move a.cs to a.acs or something like that. Maybe some of the CDs that and we can do it now and then it'll work like that. I don't. I don't know. I don't know what that one ACS even is. Upload. Boom, boom. Okay. Um, let's save him a thousand times, I guess. And we'll try to. Yep, that thing worked. Good. Okay. Let's go ahead and check that guy out again. Please hold it. Placeholder. I wonder if I need to like name it something like that it wants me to name it, things like that, you know. Just be quiet, bam bam, okay. ASP file. So um, are we like name? Are we like seeing these guys like the wrong or something? ASCX.CS post list the vulnerable code commission. So maybe we need to do like an ASC. Or something like that. Let's try that. Let's try like ASC. Save it somewhere like that. A. ASC. I know it's not supposed to that. Move A dot. A dot ASC. Yeah, let's try that. Postless. Let's try that. Right, let's go ahead and try it again. <clears throat> All right. All right. <laughs> you, you do you want to get the uh, intro? We do it tonight. <laughs> yeah, we'll be doing some penetration tonight. Yes, Audrey. Okay. No. Um. So we are back with a uh, hack pack part two. Okay. And uh, yeah. So I've got this part like right here. Um. Remember we utilized a brute force to get into here. Um. Where are my notes at? There we go. We utilized the brute force to get into here. We utilized um, my initial access was a brute force. Remember, we grabbed this whole thing, threw it into Hydra. He found that the password was one down, two down. And then we had to gain our initial access. I didn't take any notes of this part yesterday. And I also uh, we struggled a lot with that. So I'm going to go ahead and clean that up like a little bit. Make it a little bit easier for everybody to understand what's happening here. So... We'll go back to search for it. Okay, we do have that blog engine net. Um, if we go to about, we can see that we are utilizing blog engine 3360. 
All right, so 3.3.6.0. Let's go ahead and head over into there. We'll do a search exploit tech M. Um, and then we'll do, what was it? Blog, blog engine. Yep. Blog engine.net 3.3. Too much. Blog engine. Oh, search exploit tech M. That's probably why. That's not going to work now, is it? All right, so we got 3.3.6, and we ended up utilizing this one like right here, the .cs one. All right, so if we look at uh, Stack LA, we went ahead and pulled him down. We pulled a, a lot of them down yesterday, but uh, we went and pulled him down, and what did we name him? Did we mess up the name for him? Post View. There we go. So we named him Post View. So if we go ahead and cat that Post View, we can see that is a patch reversal. First off, we need to name it post view. Okay, that is one of the things it does say in here. Maybe if I was reading, I would have realized that. But we do need to name it that, okay? So, pretty much, um, it is a past reversal vulnerability leading remote code execution. This vulnerability affects blog engine.net versions 3.3.6 and below. Okay, first we set up TCP client listener. Okay, so first thing, very first thing we're going to do is we're going to edit a post under admin app editor edit post. And as you see right here, Note, this file must be uploaded as postview.ascx. Now, as you can see, we did name it ASCX. As you can see, okay, whenever we actually go to upload it, it will be uh, a little bit different, okay? So, as you can also see, there's not really much we actually need to do this out of here. We did change our IP address like right here. And we did change that port number. So we're listening at port 4444. As you can see, I have a um, listener already up and running on um, Metasploit over here. Okay, so let's go ahead and we will grab this. Throw it up here. And we should be able to edit one of the posts in here. It should actually be one of the very first posts that we get to edit. <clears throat> I'm going to edit a post. Hmm, I don't know if I like this. Because last time I actually edited a post. So let's go with Welcome Hack Pack. And let's try it. There we go. Okay, so we're just going to edit this post. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to File Manager. Bam. Okay. And we're going to upload that. Um, that what was it? Learning Pass. Nope. Back, back out of there, back. Oh God, try hack me. Learning pass. Offensive pen testing and this post view dot ASCX, we are going to end up uploading into there. Now we go to upload it, it's just gonna give us dot ASC. Okay, that's all we're gonna see that right there. And we can go ahead and exit out of here and save that. Okay, so that's now been saved. We now have that file on there. We're good, supposedly. Now from here, we're supposed to go to a question mark theme equals peer peer slash peer peer slash back to directories app data files. If you go back any more than two directories, it will not work. I think that we found out yesterday. That was another thing we found out. And we get it. It's hanging like right now. Is this guy actually going to work this time? It's the same problem that we were having the other day too. Just And there we go. Yep, we do get a call back. There we are. Cool. So we do get something back. Not really the freest shell you're ever going to see, but it is something. Let's go ahead and do a control Z. Yes. And we'll try to do a, uh, let's go ahead and search for shell two. And we'll use zero. And we'll set session to three. Go ahead and run that. And we're going to try to get a interpreter shell with this guy. Make it a little bit prettier for us. This, is, this shell is not very stable. Not a very good one. So, all right, should be seeing something here in a minute. I think that we see the callback or something like that. Maybe, maybe not. Session stack I. How's session one still up? <laughs> yeah, kill one. 
Oh, I didn't even kill that one, did I? I think I actually killed the Shelter Interpreter. It still has show options, like, real quick. Show options. Let's set the L4 to 4, 4, or 5, 5, 5, 5, and we'll run it again. Run. Shouldn't have to do that, like, right there. I killed it by accident. I was trying to kill session 1. So after this, what we have is our Windows Previous Escalation. Now there was something I did see yesterday, whenever we were doing this part, it kind of stood out to me, but it didn't really, <clears throat> let's see here, no, it doesn't want to do that, okay, let's go to session uh, 3 then. That was a great session like right there, huh, let's try to run that again. Um, set L port to four four three three. I think the last time I think I got it on the very first try, if I remember correctly. It just went like right through. I was like, Yep, I got you. I was like, Thank you. What's this? Cisco certification. So I was gonna ask on Discord if I was gonna get a Cisco certification. Right. Got those, been there, done that. Alright, now let's go ahead and uh, just exit out of here. Get back into MSF console. Because I don't know. Um, there may be a few reasons why he's acting weird in all honesty. Uh, we'll go ahead and do a cat for post view. Yep. And then I want to get that themes again. I mean, it's already uploaded in there, so hopefully we can get an interpreter shell off of this, off of this guy. Um, use exploit multi handler. Set our set, set L host to uh, ton zero. Set L port to four 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 four. Set payload to Windows shell reverse TCP. I'm gonna run that. And we'll go ahead and go there and see if we get that reverse shell TCP back. I don't know if we will or not. Hopefully we do. We did get something. Okay, cool. Uh, who am I? Okay, I asked uh, at pool blog, control Z. Hopefully we can use or search for um, shell 2, use 0. Set session to one. If I do a session tag I, we should only have one session up. We do. Let's go ahead and run that. Hopefully, we can actually do this shell interpreter like right now. If we can't this time, we're just gonna go ahead and we're just gonna continue on. Might be able to download something here. Maybe even start up a remote desktop. Man, this guy does not want to. Uh, yeah, he's not doing it tonight for some reason. Yesterday he was. Tonight he's not. Alright, so let's go ahead and we are just going to continue on. Session 1, and hopefully I can actually interact with this thing. I feel like I can't like right now. I have a, it's a really bad session. So I think that's like not really helping out very much. This session that we have like right now. <laughs> um... Definitely gonna have to upload some type of. Okay. Let's go ahead and um, use exploit multi handler again. Run. And we'll go ahead and run this one more time. Should get a call back over here. Okay, we do. On uh, session two. And this time, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we are going to try and upload a uh, MSF Venom shell. So we do MSF Venom. TACP Windows Interpreter Reverse TCP. That's my IP address. It's obviously not a DLL file. We're gonna do .exe, and we'll just name it shell.exe. We'll just name it that, and hopefully that will give us uh, something to work with, like right there, or at least something like a little bit better that we can work with. Now we need to actually download him. 
which I think you do with cert utilities. Uh, cert util windows command line download. I think we do with this. Download files cert util. Uh, so let's go into temp folder first. Let's go into CD into um, Windows temp, I think it is. Yep, okay, so I'm in Windows temp like right now. So that's good. We got cleanup.txt, stage one.txt, stage one complete. That's weird. Temp file is weird. I don't know what all that crap is in there. Um, what we got here? URL cache tech F, and then download it. What we want to download it as. Okay, so that's all we need. Cert util. Okay, cool. Tech F. Um, our IP address. Okay, so we're just going to copy him. We'll throw him into the. Let's get out here. I don't care. There we go. Um, throw him down here. We're just going to say, hey, it's going to be called shell, right? This is shell. 10, 4, 5, Go ahead and make sure that is correct. 10452.203, okay. Let's go ahead and start up a Python server. Python 3, we'll do Python 3, TACM, uh, HTTP.server. And now all we gotta do is copy this and paste it up here. We should see something coming through over there, and we don't because it's got to be on port 8000. That's okay. We're going to try one more time. Let's see, port 8000, and we get a call back. It's looking like he's taken him. You all cash command please successfully. Cool. Let's go ahead and start up another MSF console. Attack Q. Since whenever I background him, he seems to not want to work anymore. So we're just going to start up another one. And we'll use uh, exploit multi handler. Set the payload to Windows Meterpreter. Reverse TCP this time. All right, that's what we ran up here, right? Yep, reverse TCP. Set the L host to 0 and set the L4 to 4444. Go ahead and run that. And up here, we can go ahead and execute. Um, shell.exe and as you can see we're getting that stager back and we now have a interpreter session open which is going to be much more stable than whatever this this thing is up here that was weird I just grabbed and dragged it which that's going to be much much more stable much more friendly to us um, everything will be nicer on it so that's good um, so yeah let's go ahead and do a DRR. Well, I shouldn't have done that yet. Maybe a PWD or whatever. Well, oh, we're in there. Okay, cool. Um, now what we can do is we can get out of this one. Exit, exit. Okay. Or clear, whatever. All right. Um, what do we got to do next? We have, definitely have to try to do a get system. We always want to try to do that. But if we do actually get system, okay, can't do that. All right. That's fine. Uh, let's do a get UID. Still, yep. App pool blog. Okay. Um, now we need to find an abnormal service that's running, right? So we got back to where we were the other day. Um, now we need to find an abnormal service. So let's go ahead and I'll attack, attack LA. I should have log.txt winpeas.bat. So let's go ahead and upload uh, winpeas.bat. Okay. And we'll go into a shell. And we'll run that. Uh, when peas, when peas got that. And we'll let this guy go ahead and run. And we'll give him a minute to do his thing. Some uncoded service pass. Okay. I'll just type path manipulation like right there. Um, AWS light agent. This like right here is actually known as having a problem with unquote service pass. So I think in um, INE, they actually teach this exact one. AWS light agent. 
So that's something to look into. Windows schedulers. This is what I was looking at the other day. It was that W service. Windows scheduler. So that's definitely up and running. And it has an uncorded service path problem. Um, we have some, maybe some deal hijacking? No? Okay. Credentials, Windows Vault. Okay, currently store credentials, none. All right, cool. So let's not actually, I'll see that. It's down like right there, that Windows scheduler. Let me go ahead and copy that down. And that's in C program system. Ah, uh, C's. <coughs> oh, man, excuse me. Sorry about that. Um, let's go ahead and Windows schedule PS. Just an arc user. And I think, yeah, see, we got W scheduler. This is what I was looking at yesterday. But I didn't know if that was weird or not. But Windows schedule. Let's try Windows schedule. Let's try that. It is. Okay, cool. What is the name of the binary you're supposed to exploit? I have no idea. Where is Windows Scheduler even ran at? W service, that's showing us. How do we figure out where that's even being ran? W Scheduler. Um, is it in? Is that like System 32? Like program system? What is this? Where is this? <laughs> Like right here. Is that like a place? I don't think that's real. Like where it's asking us to go, I, I just don't think that's a real place. He, he went there. W scheduler. W service, okay. So what is in here that's different than everything else? Wow, I have no clue. I was supposed to find that out. Okay, so what can we do here? What do we have? Is it message.exe? And then even if I get it, what am I supposed to do with it? Am I supposed to put it somewhere? What is the hint here? Have you checked for logs for annual service? I have not checked for logs, but I did find this guy, and he's up here also. So he's being rallied right now. That's really the only reason I thought it was him. How do we even look at logs? Have you checked logs? I, did, I have not. Log file? Let's go ahead and check it. Type. Oh, uh, cat. I'll say that should work. I'm not in the Windows system, am I? That doesn't help me out at all. <laughs> yeah. Zero eight zero four nineteen, huh? Okay, um, escalate your privileges. What is the user flag on Jeff? That's not, how do I escalate my privileges with, with this now? That's what I don't understand, like right there. What are we talking about? Check exploit DB for a public write up of this vulnerability, the missing binary. You talking about like the freaking R path? Is that what they're talking about? Windows scheduler. On quarter service pass window schedule. I guess we should look that up. Sorry, let's look up uh, unquoted service pass window schedule. Windows privilege escalation on quarter service pass. On quarter service pass. Boom, boom. Project guide to exploit and own vulnerability. Let's go ahead and look at what somebody else did. This is for Windows privilege escalation. Let's go ahead and look at what this guy did. I mean, I don't even have anything to even put in here, like right now. It's like, yeah, I um, I got in, you know, and like, 
I randomly found the stuff wanted me to find. I don't know how, but I found it. Exploitation. Extend we have a right. I don't. This is uh, a lot harder than my thought here, be actually. So, I don't know if that's actually what we even have to do. Uh, let's try to figure out. Let's see the new events, or is that a type? Yeah. Administrator on FLG on the flag? No. Okay, so there's there's all the message crap like right there. Message IAC, message IAC, message IAC. Okay. Administrator's running it. If we just like delete message.exe then like put in a different one? Is it gonna be something like that? Like do we have all the permissions to message.dac. I mean, we do. We could just delete them and just throw in another one, right? Like MSF Venom. Can we just delete like MSF Venom. Attack P, same exact thing, boom, boom, boom. Attack F, EXE. Uh, L4, we'll make it 5555. And then we'll just do a message.exe. Can we just do that? And then we could change this guy to be like message one. Just do that and then upload message. That exe. Come back over or actually we just control Z this guy. Yes. Um, is that L4 to 5555 run tag J because this payload should already be correct right show payload or show uh, options payload should already be correct yeah so just run tag J just run the background I think we just got something we did so we just created we just changed it out because it allowed us to I mean what the heck because as long as to run it as whatever we wanted to, we could just change it out. So we just change message to message one. I think this is what we just did, but that's, uh, that's okay. Who am I? Or get UID. Yeah, we're now administrator. So we should be able to CD into C um, users. Whoops, that's a pipe. Then we should be able to get into someone's desktop. CD into Jeff. CD into desktop. And uh, there's the flag cat user.txt. 
Okay, that was weird. That was. I mean, that was just weird. All right, can we do a get system now? Get system. We can. Okay, so now we should have a get UID. We should be at GC system authority. So let's go ahead and see the back back slash back back. I don't think I can do it like that though. They had to put two slash in. Uh, CD to an administrator. DIR. All right, cool. And we'll go ahead and CD, I guess, in the desktop, probably, right? Desktop or documents, something like that. CD desktop first. DIR. And we'll go ahead and cap that root.txt. Or if we we're just running straight up on Windows, if we we're already in the shell, we could uh, type root.txt. UIPE. All right, there we go. Boom, boom. Submit that. What time is it? 8.39.36. Okay. Um, and now we have doing it without. That's a generator our payload. We need to pull this out of the box using PowerShell. Oh, he wants us to do it without like interpreter. Well, I don't think we really had much. I don't think we could do much with PowerShell, could we? IP shell .exe. Let's try that like, real quick. We're just gonna try it. We're um, so if we did not get an interpreter shell, right? We just never put that in there, right? So we just had just a regular listener. So if we just had a regular listener, it'll look like this, right? We just have shell. Okay. Um, temp is world is world readable and writable. So we can see in the boom Windows. Um, we we'll probably actually do a DIR and see if it's readable and writable. Temp. Okay, it doesn't actually show us. We could do it in interpreter, but usually it is. So we'll see the temp. We'll do a DIR. And then what's saying it here is to go ahead and upload something like Wimpy's bat or you know the shell.exe or something like that. Which we actually have shell.exe like right there. Let's go ahead and delete shell.exe because we already have that. Um, access denied probably because we're already using it. Why is it actually denied? Aren't I the highest thing I could possibly be? Let's make it like shell one or something like that. But what it wants us to do is use PowerShell, right? And then a command to invoke web request. URI is going to be my IP address. We'll call this one shell one and we'll make a whole new MSF Venom file or whatever else. So we'll go ahead and do an MSF Venom. Tac P, boom, boom, boom. Okay, L port will be 6666. Tac F, which we already have to change that down there to be listening. Or we can just create a whole new mess button again. Tac F, EXE. And we'll do him as shell1.exe. Okay. And we'll go ahead and enter. And he'll make that file like right there, right? So we're going to do a PowerShell taxi invoke. This will be if we were not, if we did not have a um, interpreter on here. Okay. And then we can actually get a interpreter shell, or we could always just do another, you know, another type of uh, whatever we want to do. But this is without, I guess. We shouldn't have done interpreter, huh? So let's go ahead and actually change this to Windows. Um, what is it? Windows Shell. Reverse TCP, right? Um, this then also will give us a more stable shell. URI. Or we could use this to, you know, like download, um, download WinPiece.bat or something like that. So let's go actually go ahead and I'll check LA. It's actually, um, We'll show it with shell one.exe. Well, let's go ahead and download print spoofer. How about that? That'll be easy. Uh, print spoofer does actually work on this machine. We'll go ahead and download it. We'll try it. So we got our URI. Um, our IP address is going to be I config. Just to show that, yeah, you could do this without need to type in upload, things like that. So what was it? It was print spoofer.exe, right? I'll do an ls tag la over here. Print spoofer.exe. Okay. And then the out file. Like where and what are we gonna save it as, right? We're gonna save it as C that that Windows temp I am clean dot exe. Okay. Yeah, boom boom. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and do a web shell over here. Which you know what I forgot to do is put the eight eighty eight eight, so I'm just gonna say hey you're gonna run out four eighty over here. Alright. So I forgot to put eight eighty eight behind here. So PowerShell command invoke web request tech URI. Okay. 
my IP address, followed by, hey, what did we try to download? The out file, and then that guy right there. That should be it, and it did download it, okay? So if I go ahead and do a DIR, we should have printspoofer.exe in here now. Should. Should. You may have got it. Why aren't you in here? Oh, I am clean. That's why. So we can try to run I am clean. .exe. And there we go. Okay. I mean, it's not going to work, but. Because it doesn't work. Anymore. Using the page was the original install time. This is date and time. Well, that was kind of dumb. I mean, I wasn't show all that, and I didn't even show that. Uh, <coughs> you know what? We did actually see, I think, the original date and time and the temp login. But it said using Wimpy's, right? We did run Wimpy's.bat, didn't we? We do have Wimpy's.bat somewhere up here. So we can just look at that again if we really want to. It's already ran Wimpy's. I don't know if we actually got the original date and time, though. I don't know if we let it run for long enough. Because it does take a while, but I think we might have actually, if we would have just sat there and just let it run, we could probably figure it out. But I think we've actually already seen this. Because remember we had dates? Whenever we saw all of the scheduled tasks running for message.exe, we had those dates, remember? So that's all I'm looking for like right now. Uh, if I can't find it, I guess CD back into here. All right, we'll CD 1105 Man, my nose is messed up like right now. 80419. I think that's what it is. Oh, and time. 150601. Let's try it. 80419. And then we have 150601. Nope, that's not it. Damn. 804 2019, comma. 804 2019, comma. 150601. Don't know if there's supposed to be a space in here or not. Nope. No, that's not it either. Okay. 0601. What is that last part of it? Oh, man. Um, okay, let's just run one piece that bat then. So we'll go. Shell. We should already be in temp. We can, uh, nope, CD to see that that windows slash temp. Then we'll go ahead and run one piece dot bat. Let's let this guy run and we'll see if uh, we can find anything out with him. I think it's funny that we keep getting stuck at McAfee. Like, oh, really? You don't say. We'll, uh, we'll let him run. We'll give him a couple minutes and uh, then we'll go from there. Right back to this guy. Man, oh, scan complete. Okay, that was that was fast for that part. I think it was complete for that part. That can't be the whole thing. Look at all the stuff coming through, huh? All right, well, this guy's running. I'm going to go pull my nose somewhere. So I'll be back here in a second. stuff to look at. Let's see what else. Boom, boom. So 
Wait on that last thing. This one's taking a while. We did three before we did one. That's kind of crazy, you know. Just a different uh. Just seeing what's uh what what we got coming up next and everything. After this guy like right here. So looks like we have Steel Mountain and Alfred. We still have to do those two, right? Uh, we decided to do Hack Pack, but we still got to do these two. Um, actually, no, I didn't do those two, right? I feel like I did Alfred yesterday. Like, I really feel like I did Alfred yesterday. I'll have to check Alfred out, because I may have done him yesterday. Steel Mount, I still need to do him again. I know that one for a fact. Why do I feel like I did Alfred? Why are we going back to this again? Like, what's happening? Is it just... It's just going in loops. That's all that's happening here. So what is the answer for this last one? This says to use one piece that bad, right? But it's just like looping and looping and looping. I mean, it's kind of dumb, right? Like, because we have already seen this. We saw that a while ago. And it's not taking that long to get this far, has it? There's no way it's taking this long. I feel like it's just looping. Um... No, screw this, man. There's, there's gotta be. Oh, okay. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, maybe not. Maybe it's not looping. I feel like it was looping, but I feel like there's other ways to be able to get this information though, also. I'm about to say screw this thing. This thing's taking way too long. System info. System info. You thinking? System info. Um, let's go ahead and do a shell type of system info. System info. Boom. I'll say I feel like there's other ways to be able to get this information. Original install date, 8-3-2019. Okay, so I copy and paste at 10-43-23 a.m. That's pretty close. Pretty close for a while, just guess off of a, you know, log file. So thank God we are done with that. This is actually the walkthrough right here, if you guys want to watch that. <coughs> Jeez. He probably has a lot less sneezing in his. And it's only 24 minutes. So, thank God we're done with that. Tomorrow will be, well, if we're doing one tomorrow, we'll see still. Um, if I'm able to do one tomorrow, though, then we'll be doing uh, probably Steel Mountain and Alfred. And then we'll be going back over all these guys again. Okay. And then from there, we'll do all the buffer overflows. Hit up our active directory, and then finally, lastly, add out our extra credit down there. All right, so that was that one was rough. That was pretty rough. Uh, it was a good one. Learned a lot, but that one was rough. So I hope you guys learned something. I definitely did. Um, yeah, that's about it. So have a good night, and I will see you all later.